Hey everybody, it's Modern Refugee here. We got another storm coming in, forecasted for uh, the next 24 hours. We're supposed to have high winds, uh, ice, possibly snow. So I'm out here kind of running a test on a generator and I thought maybe I'd walk you guys through here what kind of works for us. Um, about 2011 we had a kind of a prolonged power outage and we kind of decided we we needed to get ourselves something to generate our own electricity so we decided to make a change and this is kind of what uh, we decided on here. Now I don't have uh, enough money for a generac for the whole house so I decided to go uh, this route kind of piecemeal. We did this over the course of a few months um, and even if I had the money for a generac I'm not sure I would get a generac. Um, it's nice for the whole house but sometimes you need to take uh, electricity some other place. And we actually had that happen here a couple of times in the last uh, few years where somebody needed some help. Some friends and family uh, had power outages and we were able to uh, load the generator up and uh, take it over there and help them out. And that's kind of one of the reasons I kind of like this, uh, this setup here. Now uh, this generator, um, I did do a couple of upgrades on it and one of them is I uh, uh, converted it over to propane. And uh, it runs on either propane or gasoline. I got it set up for propane right now. Uh, one of the advantages I guess I like about propane is, is it starts fairly easy and you don't have this tank full of gas on top of it. When this had six gallons of gas in it, it was very heavy and it was hard for you know friends and family to move this around when it was full. So it's much lighter now when it runs on the uh, propane. You know, it is hooked to a propane tank. That's one of the disadvantages of it. But uh, storing propane is much easier than storing just regular gas, too, because you just store it in the cylinders and you're good. And I actually run it on 100-pound uh, cylinders, and that's kind of what this looks like right here. Kind of just a standard 100-pounder. And um, got a hose that runs up here to the... Uh, propane conversion. Now this propane conversion is actually called a motor snorkel. It's made by a company called US Carburation. Um, it was actually really easy to install. I'm no mechanical wizard, but I had kind of zero issues hooking this thing up one uh, warm sunny afternoon way back in the day. And I've had no issues with this whatsoever. It starts really good. I uh, have uh, nothing but kind of praise for this uh, setup. So this is kind of our generator setup here that we use at the uh, place. And it kind of, it won't run the whole house, but it runs the stuff that's the most important. And uh, we don't really have any issues with it. So I'm going to kind of show you here, see if I can show you how this starts. Um, you can see down there on that disc, there's a little spring button. And that's kind of the priming plunger where you will, uh, you'll hit that a couple of times and that'll uh, put gas directly into the cylinder. I'm going to see if I can't do that here for you, show you how that works, see if you can hear the propane. And then all you do is give the recoil a pull. Let's see if I can show you that here. And as you can see, it uh, starts fairly easy. Two pulls, I had it going. Now uh, we shut it off. All we do is we uh, turn the propane off. real simply there how we shut it off so uh, as you can see it starts fairly easy it was two pulls three hits on the primer bulb there and I haven't had any problems with this starting when it was really cold either this kind of always uh, kind of fires up for us so I'm out here just kind of testing it out and making sure it's gonna start give me no problems here just in case we have to use it here in the next 24 hours I'm gonna take you in the house here in a second I'm gonna show you the uh, the transfer switch that I have for this I also installed a transfer switch and that's so I can uh, safely run this generator for the certain things in the house that I decide that I, I wanted to run. Um, that way you don't uh, backfeed electricity up into the lines. That's kind of the proper way of hooking up a generator. I know there's all kinds of improper ways to hook up a generator, but I kind of wanted to make this right when I did it. So that's kind of how, uh, how this goes here. And a big thing with a generator is before you decide to get one, um, you need to look at the stuff that you want to run at your place and then kind of do a wattage chart on it and that's kind of what it uh, what generators go by is how many uh, watts of uh, 
electricity that you're going to use. Now this, uh, that's my wattage here on this uh, generator. And the transfer switch actually has a gauge on it. And it'll show me how many watts that I'm uh, drawing. And I usually draw around 3,000, 3,500 watts for the main things that I want to run. So uh, that's kind of kind of the skinny on the generator here and uh, what we got. Uh, but anyway, I kind of want to just show you guys this. I'm going to take you in the house now and show you what the transfer switch looks like and give you an idea what that looks like in the house. This is the plug where we plug the generator into the house. It's just a kind of a large all-weather uh, outlet. Kind of open it up here show you what it looks like underneath. And that's where the generator plugs into. And then uh, I can... Uh, I made, actually made a cord to go from the generator over here to this plug so I can run the generator uh, safely um, away from the house when we're, uh, when we're running things. But anyway, that's kind of what, uh, what the plug looks like. When you plug into the, after the generator started and it's running, you plug into the, uh, the generator and you run the cord over here and you plug it into the house. Now I'm going to take you to the house and kind of show you the transfer switch. And here we are in the house, and this is the transfer switch. This is the uh, unit that uh, regulates the electricity that goes into the uh, breaker box. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, six circuits on there, and these are the those circuits run the six things that we think are the most important here to have um, at the house if we have a power outage. And uh, as you can see down here on the bottom, that's our gauge there that tells us how much... Uh, electricity and watts that we're drawing that way we don't overload the system uh, one thing that I didn't mention uh, when I was out talking about the generator outside is uh, when electric motors start up so like when a furnace starts up or a refrigerator or a freezer starts up that electric motor um, will draw more at that particular moment to get the whole system going so you got to kind of figure for that too so you don't want to have your generator maxed right out um, with the amount of watts you want to have a reserve kind of so then if a motor or two kicks on you're not uh, you're bogging down your generator so that's kind of a, an important thing uh, that you want to kind of keep in mind too so like if you have a uh, portable generator running like a furnace or a uh, well, let's say like a freezer or something when that motor kicks on it's going to take a little more and if you're already at the peak amount of watts with the generators taken you could uh, screw your generator up so you don't want to you don't want to do that um, so you want to kind of figure a little bit extra so you if you're drawn like we're drawn you know 3500 to 4000 watts let's say you want at least a 5000 to 5500 watt generator to uh, to have uh, that little bit extra in reserve there if you need it plus if you need to plug something into the mainframe out on the uh, generator so because you can actually plug things out into the front of the generator as well so if you need something uh, running right there by the generator you can just plug into it directly and you don't have to go through this system but anyway this is the transfer switch this is uh what i installed to kind of make it everything uh kosher i didn't want to uh have any chance of backfeeding electricity up into the line so that's kind of how why I installed this and it was actually fairly easy to install um, I'm no electrician but I uh, had no problems installing this it actually came with really good instructions and all you do is you add this the wires to this onto the circuits in your uh, breaker box and that's basically all you did to uh, to hook this up so anyway I just kind of wanted to show you guys what a transfer switch looks like I know there's like I said this is kind of the the proper way of hooking up a generator. There's lots of improper ways of doing it, but this is kind of the, the the right way of doing it. So I just kind of wanted to show everybody this. Um, I think it's kind of important that uh, folks can make a little bit of electricity should uh, something happen. Um, so this is kind of my setup here. I got a little transfer switch in the house and I got a generator that runs on two different types of fuel. So um, it keeps us covered. And so far it's been really good to us and we've had a really good uh, experience with it. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to share this with everybody. This is a modern refugee. I hope you guys got some information from this. You guys have a good day.